Welcome to Dreamland XR at CES. Welcome to Dreamland XR. Welcome to Dreamland. Welcome to Dreamland. You know that sign language for applause, right? Hello, my name is Joe Devon, and I'm co-founder of Diamond, an inclusive digital agency, as well as Global Accessibility Awareness Day, otherwise known as GAD. GAD is a day that is meant to bring awareness to developers, product people, designers who make digital products to make sure that we build the products in a fashion that works for people with disabilities. GAD goes viral every year on social media. We have a Twitter reach of 200 million users. I'm Larry Goldberg, and I'm the head of accessibility for Verizon Media. I'm Meredith Ringel Morris, and I am the Research Area Manager for Interaction, Accessibility, and Mixed Reality at Microsoft Research. I'm Sherry Byrne Haber, and I'm the Founding Accessibility Manager for VMware. Hi, my name is Christopher Patno, and I'm the Head of Accessibility Programs and Disability Inclusion at Google. I think right now XR is at a crossroads where we really have the opportunity to bake in accessibility from the beginning and make accessibility a fundamental part of the design of these technologies from the ground up. So I've been doing technology for about 25 years and I, I really think that XR is the first technology where accessibility is, is part of the creation of it. It's a forethought, not just an afterthought. I believe the winners in the XR space are the ones that consider accessibility a requirement in their product development. And I am seeing that a lot of the big players are paying attention to it, fortunately. We've got a good head start on making XR technologies accessible. It's hard to say that in this case, it's a forethought since XR has been around for a few years. Uh, so the time for forethought may have passed, but I say we got a very good start on making sure that XR technologies are accessible before they become massively mainstream. It's important to understand that the first draft of the W3C XR VR standards was released four months ago. So there's still time to go re read them, uh, provide public commentary, understand how they might impact your work going forward. The other thing is to understand that equal access means equal access. And we've had standards from the W3C for 21 years. If you have an audio stream, you have to caption it. There is no other way to make things accessible to somebody who's deaf. Don't wait for the standards to be finalized. Use some common sense. I see many opportunities for XR to support accessibility application areas, for example, in health and rehabilitation applications, as well as in augmented reality experiences to support aging in place or other kinds of self-care. So XR is going to be both an assistive technology and a technology for the mainstream. And it, it is almost the first piece of technology that is designed first with people with disabilities in mind. You think back towards the Google Glass with it had having the little captions there. Um, there's so much here that that is, 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 is amazing and really profoundly impactful. Just in the past six months, Google had a research project called Wearable Subtitles. And even yesterday, a Transcribe Glass announced their product. And these are dedicated products to create captions for people. So Absolutely believe so. One of the major issues for people who are blind, for example, is to build a spatial map in their mind of how things visually appear to people. And VR and XR is an excellent way to assist people who are blind with that. Also, people who have mobility issues will be able to do things in VR and XR that they're not able to do in real life. XR will absolutely be an assistive technology, uh, helping people with disabilities. Accessibility is all about innovation. 
Haptics in particular will be helpful to people with disability, and it already is today, including folks who are blind or deaf or deafblind. And I have friends who are already using haptic devices to alert them to things. XR technologies are absolutely going to be assistive technologies for people with disabilities. They're already begun. There are really excellent applications for people on the autism spectrum, people with low vision, with limited mobility. The really interesting work being done now is to adapt the principles that are now being developed for XR technology accessibility and adapt them to whatever's next. What is the next emerging technology that we can apply accessibility principles to? This can utterly transform the lives of people in a way we've only seen on TV or film. Think of Jordi LaForge, but with a better looking visor. If I were building an XR product today, the one piece of advice I would provide is absolutely make sure that your testing includes people with disabilities. I think there are five key opportunities for accessibility in XR to consider. Uh, the accessibility of content uh, shown in XR systems, the accessibility of the devices and hardware used to access XR experiences, inclusive representations of users in virtual environments, uh, content specifically for accessibility audiences, such as health or rehabilitation content, and finally, the accessibility of interaction techniques and user interfaces for apps in XR. I'd say for people who are building XR products, the issues of accessibility go far beyond the social benefit case, which of course is primary. But there's a very good business case for building accessibility into your new products. Uh, good business practices always include a commitment to diversity of users, use cases, look at corporate training, education, telehealth. But building trust, reliability, user-focused design, and expansive applications will be competitive advantages to anyone who's uh, entering this highly competitive marketplace. So I'd say there's very, very good business rationale here for making your XR technologies fully accessible. There's still time for the majority of the players in VR and XR to get ahead of the game. As an advocate for accessibility, I often get asked the question, what advice do you give to people when building XR products? And to me, it's the, the simple five words, never about us without us. If you build something for someone, you're doing it wrong. You want to build it with someone not for someone. Build with people, design with people, test with people. If you don't do it this way, you're never gonna solve the right problem. I'm so excited to be a part of Dreamland XR and that they have decided to include accessibility as part of the event. It really highlights the importance of paying attention to people with disabilities when building XR products uh, and the future of technology. I'm super excited to be here with the Dreamland XR during CES, bringing the conversation around accessibility in XR. Um, thank you for the opportunity. I'm super proud to be supporting this, our friends with GAD, and trying to make the world a more accessible place.